What is up dudes and lady dudes? Welcome back to Just Nuts guys. Today we've got another deck profile for you. This time I'm looking at my Orcus build. This is a deck that I actually never profiled before, which is kind of weird. This is one of those ones like Strikers where I always thought Orcus were cool, but when they're the best deck in the game for like a year straight, they just become less and less and less cool and you just see a million deck profiles and nothing's interesting. But finally, the deck is not considered a tier one deck after the um, January balance and it's been a, a, been a minute, but I also wanted to wait for Gearsu to come out and so I finally have my copies of Gearsu and I finally have what I need to make this deck profile. So Without further ado, let's jump into it, um, and you'll see this this profile of mine actually has a little bit of extra spice that uh, makes this one a little bit interesting, so we'll get to that in a little bit, but yeah. Let's start off with just the basic stuff. We all know this stuff. Three copies of Mech Knight Orcus Gearsu, or Gearsu the Orcus Mech Knight. Three copies of Orcus Nightmare, two copies of Orcus Skeleton, two copies of World Legacy World 1, and one copy of Orcus Brass bombard there's nothing too crazy insane here i think this is actually pretty standard as far as things have gone for the orcas cards this card's insane it's probably like my favorite normal summon in the deck now and i've actually decided to drop the scrap engine entirely at least for this build you'll see why as we get further on here uh, but other than that it's pretty standard i mean or nightmare is like just the best extender in the deck and she kind of acts as harp did before but still missing harp does hurt even if we just had one copy of harp it'd be so much better uh, then the two skeletons and the two wands because those kind of help up make up for like again the lack of harps and then brass comes up in like weird situations getting stuff out of your hand it's pretty cool so that's pretty standard there moving on to our other normal summons i'm on uh on uh armageddon knight and dark greffer this shouldn't be too crazy here either this is what everybody played before scraps and even some people play it with scraps because just opening a normal summon is so strong um, and yeah, I like playing both of these because particularly they are, they are different names. We get to our new, uh, the spicy card in here that'll make a ton more sense. Then we get to our last like honorary Orcus card, which is the uh, Gizmek Orochi. This card's insane. It's either uh, an extender as a body on board, but not just a body on board, but it's a body on board every single turn. It has possible removal. It's a big body to defend yourself with in the battle phase. And you can just play beat down with it yourself. So such a good card, such an awesome uh, just extra card you get to play in this deck so easily. And then we move to our spicy card. So this is our spice in this version of the deck, Orbital Hydrolander. Uh, this may be a kind of obscure card and you might not know exactly what it does, but if you would like to know, this card is very special. So if you don't know what it does, it says, if you have five or more monsters in your graveyard and none of them have the exact same name, he can special summon himself for free for the hand. His second effect and his, his like main effect that makes him good is as a quick effect during either player's turn, you can mill the top three cards of your deck, send them to the graveyard, and if after doing that and on resolution, you have no doubles of monster names in your graveyard even after that, right? So you need to have no doubles in your grave to summon him in the first place, and then after that mill, if you still have no doubles, you can then non-targeting just pop any card on the field, destroy any card on the field. Very, very good disruption, and uh, so we've kind of tailored our deck to kind of build uh, around that, uh, but not entirely, right? So I didn't want to just like build a bad or partic particularly like terrible Orcus list because I'm playing two to three Hydrolander, I'm trying to turbo it out at all costs, and it's just causing everything else to kind of get jumbled up, right? So just playing one copy of this, when I can go into it, it's insane, it's a very strong card by itself, and just makes like your setups like so much stronger. And one of the coolest parts is that we can make our Orcus effects quick effects, where even if we had something like a Nightmare Engrave and we milled off of it, if we already had Babel set up, we could just quick effect chain the Nightmare to banish itself, that way we would only have one Nightmare because our, uh, Hydrolander only checks to see if there's two monsters uh, of the same name uh, on resolution, not on the activation. So that's really, really cool, and that's really important to keep in mind. That's it for like the main monsters as far as hand traps go. We've got th two copies of Ash Blossom, two copies of Valor, two copies of Nibiru, and one copy of DD Crow. As far as the main deck goes, uh, pretty standard here. I mean, this is just like basic like Hydrolander stuff. I didn't want to play triples because if I like Ash Blossom my opponent and then I mill, I'd have two Ash Blossoms still in the deck, whereas otherwise I would have one only in the deck, which like literally cuts the chances of hitting an Ash in half. So you're literally like 
cutting in half the chances of you getting a bad mail off Hydrolander, which is really good um, there. And yeah, the rest should be pretty explanatory. Like Nibiru 2 is fine. Valor's good. DD Crow's good. Like they're all good, right? And I just didn't want to play three of any um, there. And I still wanted to have a, a fair number of hand traps just because of where the meta is. Everybody's trying to do crazy combos. So we're just not trying to let them get all the way there if we can. Then moving on to our spells, we'll start off with Orchestrated Babble. This card is really, really good and is one of the cards that helps Hydrolander the most. One of the cards that just has the best synergy with Hydrolander other than the fact that the deck just naturally um, like manipulates its graveyard as is. So Babble, really, really nice there. Just a great card for the grind game. Two copies of Orchestrated Return. We're still playing like the standard Orcus lineup, so this is like a really nice card to either just get Orcus and Grave, while also dig digging deeper in your deck to maybe a normal summon for maybe back row for protection, whatever you want, hand traps, anything. You're just drawn. It's really good. Uh, one thing to note, I am not playing um, Allure of Darkness in the deck, in this deck, and mainly I'm only do not playing it specifically in this build just because of space. I really just had a lot of cards I wanted to play. Allure just ended up being one of the cards that seemed extra. It seemed like filler, uh, a nice like consistency card, but we have other cards that are kind of filling in um, as consistency cards that we'll get to in a bit. So that is why I ended up dropping that. Uh, one copy of Foolish Burial. This card is absolutely phenomenal in this deck. Just getting you a Nightmare Dump, getting you whatever else you need, Gizmek, whatever you want. Really good. And then for our other spice that kind of goes with the Hydrolander package, which is our Foolish Burial Goods. Two copies of this. The idea behind this is that I've never really seen anybody take advantage of orchestrated crescendo on turn one before. And that's what this card attempts to do for us, is we are attempting to send our crescendo turn one, then immediately banish our crescendo to search any dark machine, and then just add a ton of consistency and power to our deck via that way. Um, so the one thing to consider here is that this is so versatile, right? It's literally Roto at that point because uh, you may say like, oh, like you're just gonna play this just to get Hydrolander? Well, no, because if we didn't have a normal summon, you just get Gearsu. If you don't have an extender, uh, I don't know if you really wanna add Nightmare, but if maybe if you already had like, um, um, blah 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 what did we just look at I forgot what it's called uh, return sorry if you already have orchestrated return in hand you grab nightmare um, otherwise you can grab gizmic if you need an extender otherwise you just grab hydrolander and that's the coolest part about this if you already have a way to do like your standard play this can just grab you hydrolander and then he just add, you just add hydrolander to your board what your ending board would be and it's like a really strong like addition just one card addition to the board which is so strong keep in mind you will be locked into dark machines for the entire turn if you do use the crescendo graveyard effect uh so just make sure you know that and yeah it's just so good because it, it's one of those effects that's n that doesn't say like you can't use it to turn it sent to graveyard you just can't use both of its effects to negate and search in the same turn so you're using the search effect turn one and then the negate effect from that point on which is really good for the rest of the spells, though, we've got Consistency with Rhoda. This is either Arm Knight or Greffer. I like they're different. They work kind of differently, so a little bit of versatility there. Two copies of Cyclone. This is more of like a meta call at the moment, and also this deck can struggle with heavy back row decks. Or like there can only be one really kills this deck, as well as like stuff like Summon Limit or Mystic Mine. So just like dealing with pain cards like that, just having this in the main. And it's just good versus Eldritch as well, which is the best deck in the game at the moment. Do not get mistaken about that. And then we play three Called by the Grave. Again, this is more of a mid-range version of this deck. This is not a, de a version of the deck that's attempting to do crazy, insane combos and end on eight negates. That's not what this version is trying to do. You're trying to set up a cool, uh, power, like fairly decent board with a couple disruptions, but also just like really good setup for future turns. And then you're going to try and grind it out, right? So this helps with just like staving off uh, Veilers, Ashes, Crows, stuff like that. And the last spell we play is one Insta Fusion. I really wanted to work this into the main. I know it's only a one, and you may say, really, you're going to allocate an extra deck slot for a one of? And I would say, yeah. <laughs> I mean, like, it's a good going second card, just getting you Thousand Eyes and either baiting a negate or uh, just starting to rip your opponent's board apart. But it's also free body, and that's another thing that I was missing in the deck when I was playing more hand traps. This was just, like, another uh, Crow, and that's why I ended up dropping Crow to one. 
was just because I'm like, if I, I'm playing 11 hand traps, if I drop crow to one, I'll be down to 10, which is still a good amount, but I also get to swap for a, another good going second card, but also a card that also just gets me a free body on board, which in the right hand, that extra body can just be the difference between you getting to your combo or not, especially through hand traps. So I wanted to work that in if I could, and I did. And then for the traps, pretty self-explanatory, two copies of Crescendo and three copies of Infinite and Permanence making our hand trap total 10, so hopefully we see at least one, if not two, going second versus these combo decks to handle those. And then Crescendo, I think if you're going to play the uh, Foolish Burial Goods' package, like I think you should probably be playing two Crescendo. It's not that bad. If you draw one, you could still dump the other one off, off of um, Foolish Burial Goods, or it just means like if you just do the standard Orcus play, it means you get to end on Babel and Crescendo with potentially like hand traps, and like that's pretty good. Um, honestly, especially with like the way Orcus can grind. So that is it for the main 40 cards. Um, is there anything I wanted to note there? Uh, like I said, no, um, no scrap package. Okay. I just think like if you're going to play scrap package, you kind of got to play like three scrap recycler. And I'm not worried about playing like a crazy wombo combo version of this deck. And that's what kind of aims to do when you lose a little consistency in terms of like kind of feeling obligated to play the, um, not Scrap Recycler, Scrap Golem. It's a huge brick in the deck, but I understand if you want to play it for power. That's up to you, but it is another, th like, two to three of, of cards that, like, are really bad. But other than that, the only cards that conflict with um, Hydrolander as a three of in the deck is literally just uh, Gearsu. He's the only card, but he's just, like, too good of a normal summon, so I, I chose to play him anyway. Um, and then, like, no allure. Like I said, like, with the Fool's Burial Goods is essentially being Rhoda in the deck, like, why play something like allure in this version, right? So, yeah. Then we move to our extra deck, which is going to start off with three Galatea and the, uh, Long Gearsu, as far as our Orcus monsters are concerned. Uh, this may be seem weird, like, I know a lot of people haven't been playing three Galatea for much longer, and I, I definitely, definitely think there's an argument for that, but, uh, those, those decks are usually playing more combo-oriented version of Orcus, so they're trying to go, like, combo with either one or two Galateas turn one, and then just, like, kill their opponent on the next turn. So, like, they're not really trying to grind. This version of Orcus, though, is trying to grind, so we're going into one, maybe two Galatea turn one, and then we really want that other one just in case, and also, I don't play Orcus a ton. Uh, or at least I haven't in the past, so uh, this gives me a little wiggle room to misplay and still have like a, a Galatea in the deck if I need to make one later on, so that's why I'm playing that. And then the one Link Revo, this is only there for two things. The Brass Bombard in certain awkward hands, as well as the token you get off of Gear Suit, because Gear Suit gives you and your opponent a token, which then Link Revo can just take that token into itself and why that's important is that Galatea can only be made with effect monsters. It's not just a monster and, a, and an Orcus, it's an effect monster and an Orcus. So you gotta have effect monsters, so Link Rebo's there for that. Uh, for the Nightmares, I'm just on Phoenix and Unicorn. You could play Cerberus if you want, it's just a space thing for me, and I felt like these already cover it, and the deck already has uh, Dingir Sue, and I'm also playing Lib, and so we just have like plenty of removal, so I'm not, I wasn't too worried about that. Um, speaking of which, this right here is our copy of um, IP Mascarena. So IP Mascarena, just a great card. If you if you have like extra extenders, then you don't just end on like the old normal like Orcus stuff. You can actually just end like uh, that stuff plus a Galatea, or not not plus a plus an IP, which is live. So you just add a, a unicorn disruption on top of everything you had before. So that's pretty good. Or you could also potentially go into something like. Um, uh, zero Boros, and then hit your opponent with a Zero Boros board banish in the middle of everything as well. Um, one copy of Lib. I'm not playing any World Legacy Spell or Traps you can set off of Lib. Maybe you could side them if you wanted to. That's up to you. But for me, I just like this because it's like a link climbing tool. It's completely generic. All you have to do is get the wand in Grave, and then you could just make this, and then as you're like mid-game, like client link climbing, you're just able to like hit uh, you're just able to like non-targeting remove uh, like shuffle any card your opponent controls So I'm literally just playing it for that. It's like really cool play when you make it It just feels like extra removal while you're like already about to just like link up anyway And it's pretty cool. So I don't know. I just think it's cool as a one over in here um, And then this copy is barricade board blocker for some reason I looked for like 20 minutes I know I have one. It's a common like I've had I know I've had one. I just know I have 
Um, and for some reason, I just like cannot find it for the life of me. But whatever, this is Barry Caber Blocker. He's a dark machine, so you can make him gener as a generic uh, Link monster while under the crescendo restriction uh, to also put like another name in the graveyard. So um, for Hydra Lander, so he's he's nice for the, for like certain players with that. And then for the Link fours, we're on zero Boros, and still our Boral Sword that Mike has. <sighs> yes, I know Mike has it, and I wish I could show you guys the Boral Sword. I mean, it's not that crazy, like you know what Boral Sword looks like, but I wish I didn't look like a pleb playing copycats <laughs> as my Boral Sword. But yeah, um, pretty self-explanatory. When this card's resolving, you just you're just winning. There's no deck that just like there's very few decks that just like don't care about this card. Uh, so if you're resolving it, you're probably just winning the duel. And then for our last stuff, we're on two copies of Ding, Gotta Play Him, and then the one copy of Thousand Eyes Restrict. Um, it's a one-off. If, if it was at two or three, I would consider playing like Thousand Eyes plus Millennium Eyes, uh, just because this deck can be hand trap weak, depending on the hands. But um, yeah, just th I, don't, I don't think you can justify a deck that one is like pretty or extra deck oriented, playing two copies of cards that are only like their only purpose serve is to like make a one of like work a little better so that's pretty much it for the extra deck as well and i think that does it for our profile i i, I really like orcas i think they're cool i think they're totally underrated i know they haven't been performing like crazy well so far in this format but I do think they do have a chance, and maybe part of it is that everybody wants to make this deck like crazy, crazy combo oriented. And all I've been trying to do is just play like a more control version, and it's actually been working out pretty well for me um, in testing and otherwise. So maybe this is the, the difference you guys should be looking for. I have no idea. <laughs> but yeah, that's my take on um, Orcus featuring Hydra Lander, guys. Hopefully, this is a cool, interesting build, you guys, uh, that kind of like can spark some. Uh, you know, some interest in this deck for sure. Um, but that's going to do it for me here. Thank you so much for watching. As always, leave your comments down below on this build. If you think there are any ways I can optimize it, do any small changes to adjust it, whatever. Or let me what let me know what version of Orcus you like to play. I'm always interested to hear your guys' comments on that. And that'll do me here, guys. If you want to see more deck profiles from me in the future, definitely subscribe to the channel because uh, I got more coming. Trust me. Um, I've been waiting on some cards that I ordered, and, and, and I got a couple more on the way. So I'll see you guys in the next one. Thank you so much for watching. Peace.